Last year's regular season champs have changed, but they still have the same goal. And a six-time Stanley Cup winner weighs in on his thoughts about the premier AA league. Valentine's Day love and hockey are in full swing. And of course, so is this episode of ECHL Week. <laughs> Hi, welcome to another edition of ECHL Week. This time we come to you, as you can probably tell, from the Huntington Center in Toledo, Ohio, home of the Toledo Walleye. Let's get started by taking a look at our top story of the week. Right, Spike? The Cincinnati Cyclones won the Brabham Cup for the best regular season record and tied an ECHL mark for home ice success a year ago. But in the playoffs, they fell in the Central Division final round to Toledo. This year looks similar so far. Despite numerous personnel changes, since he's been atop the Central Division for most of the season, is still very good on home ice, and team members are hopeful the postseason will last a bit longer this time around. After a recent morning skate, we asked a few of them to discuss their thoughts about this season. I think our team's almost the opposite of last year. We were young up front last year with some experience on the blue line. We got younger on the blue line, uh, but got a little more uh, experience up front. And I, I think that's what our league is. You're going to have youth somewhere. Um, a, a blend is always nice, but it, uh, it doesn't always happen that way. Well, if you compare it to last year, we, uh, you know, we have a different team, obviously. We have, I think, a lot more like, grit, hard work in our game. Um, we're finding ways to win games different ways than we did last year. Last year was higher scoring and, uh, you know, we were just kind of had a lot of puck possession this year. It's uh, a lot closer games, one goal leads in the third period. So I think, um, you know, winning games like that is going to help us come uh, April, May and June. I mean, I think as the year goes on, it definitely gets more fun because, you know, things build up over time, you know, the games get more intense. And as the season goes on, games mean more because teams are trying to make playoffs and get position in the playoffs. So, you know, yeah, you play a lot of teams. Uh, same teams a lot, but you know it's it becomes more fun because it becomes more of a battle every night. Obviously, we want to play as long as possible. Uh, you know, we were a little disappointed in last year, especially the the regular season we had, and we, we feel it ended a little bit too soon. But um, you know, I think we got a little bit of different mix of guys here, and uh, hopefully, we'll be uh, a little bit more prepared for playoff hockey. Uh, it's going to be an absolute war to win the division. But I think the biggest war is going to be um, who's going to who's going to fall into those playoff spots because there, as much as we're halfway through the year already, a lot's going to change because everybody's so competitive. Everything's gearing towards playoffs. That's how we've been since day one, even when you know everything was O O and O. So um, you know everything in the long run, systems wise, work wise, practices, it's ever, it's all geared towards playoffs. A National Hockey League executive gives his thoughts about the ECHL. That's straight ahead on ECHL Week. All I can say is absolutely wow. What a pass and what a goal. All the news, scores, stats, and highlights. If it's hockey, it's here. The official app of the NHL. Hi, I'm Will Merchant of the Idaho Steelheads, and you're watching ECHL Week. Mercury's Storm, Walleye, Blades, Gold Diggers, there's a lot of hockey history in Toledo. If you get to Huntington Center to watch a game, make sure to check out the Toledo Hockey Hall of Fame located in the concourse. Now let's take a look at our news from all around the ECHL. A trade worth mentioning, an exchange of defensemen. Allen, looking to tweak its roster in preparation for a lengthy postseason run, acquired six-year pro Cody Corbett from Atlanta. The Gladiators, still in the playoff hunt but also looking to the future, received rookie blue liner Greg Campbell in return. Don't forget, still plenty of wheeling and dealing ahead. We'll recap all the activity leading to the trade deadline in the ECHL Week show, which debuts on Friday, March 6th. Hi, I'm Connor LeCouvet of the Main Mariners, and you can find me on Instagram at CLeCouvet. We previously explored the ECHL's place in the world of pro hockey development, but we also like to have notable people in the business weigh in on the subject. 
Kevin Lowe is vice chair of Oilers Entertainment Group, the owner of the Edmonton Oilers. He spent seven seasons as the Oilers general manager and prior to that, during an outstanding playing career, won six Stanley Cups with the Oilers and the New York Rangers. We caught up with Lowe during the ECHL's All-Star event in Wichita, the Thunder or the Oilers ECHL affiliate, and spoke with him about the NHL's and Edmonton's player development model. I think you're seeing because of the now most teams have an ECHL affiliate, uh, I think uh, in, in general the National Hockey League are, are starting to look at, in some respects, the baseball model, uh, AA, AAA majors. And um, uh, but in terms of the Oilers, uh, uh, you know, I'm not running the hockey side anymore. But I do know Kenny Holland's history of being a draft and development type of uh, general manager uh, bodes well for the affiliation, um, uh, the Oilers affiliation in Wichita. I would assume because uh, he's going to want to keep his draft picks and develop them. There's a challenge NHL teams face in taking time to develop prospects. Holland has. Uh, you know, one of my favorite uh, sayings, uh, and he came up with it, uh, which I really believe is, is important to development ultimately, is uh, he always felt that the, you keep your prospects in the minors until they're overripe. And of course, NHL teams use the ECHL not just to develop players. I mean, the other advantage to having, you know, the affiliations in the East Coast League is on, you know, on, on the, the coaching side, the trainer side, the administrative side. You, if you're if you're really watching over uh, people that are developing in those other uh, aspects of the industry, then uh, you know the, the the channel is there, the system is there to bring people within your organization. An interdivisional matchup is featured on our highlight game when ECHL Week continues. This is Colin Shuck for the Idaho Steelheads, and this is ECHL Week. And you're watching ECHL Week. You're watching ECHL Week. You're watching ECHL Week. You're watching ECHL Week. And you're watching ECHL Week. And you're watching ECHL Week. And you're watching ECHL Week. 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 Full Gallery ECHL Week. You're watching the number one source for ECHL news, ECHL Week. one day at PE when they were like yelling at me and then you just linked arms with me. I don't think you know how much like that helped me. I finally like knew that I had somebody. I'm John O'May of the Orlando Solar Bears, and you're watching ECHL Week. One of our most popular features is the highlight game of the week. Let's check out this Eastern Conference battle. And here come the Railers, down to our left in the offensive end. Rondo, quick shot, and he scores! Atlanta back in on the attack, skating after a loose puck. The former captain of Brown University, Tommy Marchant. Archman fires, and the Gladiators score. Malatesta, top of the point, unloads a drive, and he scores. Face off the glove side of the Atlanta Gladiators, netminer Chris Nell, one by the Gladiators, here they come, breakaway chance, forehand, backhand, and he scores. That one was Nelson. Logan Nelson. Out to Almeida, below the left circle, will take it for a skate, far side, turnaround shot, and he scores! Railers finished period at number one. 17 shots and Thompson in the high slot and he scores! I don't really have one. And a shot from Atlanta, they score after winning the faceoff. Walker side of Jacob Skarik, top of the point. Josh the thrower and threw it on net. Bo and Malatesta at the Atlanta blue line. Bo Brower and Malatesta. Brower hammering with the right. Bo, the undercut, now over. Brower's first fight of the season, battling with Malatesta. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, Brower and Malatesta going. Bo trying to get the left on Malatesta as they have both shoulders held up. Bo giving the left. Now he's going for the jersey over. Malatesta back with the right as they converge at the center ice logo. McKinnon down to Thompson, right circle, long range shot. 
Pass saved by Nell. 15 seconds to go. Over to count. Pirog scores! Takes a hit up high. Here comes Atlanta. Three on one run. Led by Peterson. Left side. Out to the high side. Corbett fires and scores. Wow. Hi, I'm Craig Skodalski of your Wheeling Nailers, and you're watching ECHL Week. We continue our look at new coaches around the ECHL. Here's Ben Boudreau of the Fort Wayne Comets. You may recognize the Boudreau name. Ben is following in his dad's footsteps. The senior Boudreau, Bruce, is the current bench boss of the NHL's Minnesota Wild and is in his 13th big league coaching season. One of Bruce Boudreau's early coaching stops was in Fort Wayne, and he also spent three seasons coaching Mississippi in the ECHL. There's all sorts of things that, that we talk about. I mean, he had a win last night, and I know that they weren't in the best position, that, but they've, they found a way to put a few together. So whether it's just a little little text message saying, hey, you know, thinking about you, a great win, or, you know, when it doesn't go their way, hey, we love you, the, the whole nine. And uh, you know how that feels because now I'm on the opposite end of that. One of the challenges Ben has dealt with in his first season running the show has been dealing with people. It, it's managing personalities and you got a lot of personalities to manage not only from the guys on your roster but from the front office your affiliates as well so there's a lot of day-to-day -day interaction with people that uh, you might not necessarily be be ready for until till you're right into that situation this is the most fun I've ever had this is also one of the biggest things I can't go I'm losing sleep and I, I never have a problem losing sleep but th there's no better place I'd rather be than at the ice rink I'm in a great spot in my life and you know as long as we continue to win it, it's great that wraps up another edition of ECHL week from Toledo, Ohio, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow us on all our social media channels. We got a bunch of them, and they'll help keep you up to date on everything that's going on throughout the ECHL. See you next time.